My name is Dylan Tomina. Uh, I'm a fisherman, uh, not a biologist or uh, any other kind of scientist, so please bear with me. We're here to celebrate the largest dam removal project in U.S. history. An extraordinary opportunity to watch more than 100 miles of pristine wild salmon habitat return to its natural state. As a lifelong Northwest salmon and steelhead fisherman, it's been a long wait for me. Now that the day has finally arrived, it's hard to describe my excitement. There's so much to look forward to here as the Elwha reconnects with the sea for the first time in nearly a century. There are legends here of 100-pound Chinook salmon and mind-boggling abundance of wild steelhead, coho, and other fish. In my dreams, I see a day in the not-so-distant future when my kids and I can be here to fish for them. Then, the Elwha will be a crown jewel of river recovery and a stronghold for wild salmon. I think we all hope these dreams and legends can become reality here. Of course, there are concerns. A lot of us worry the sediment load from behind the dams will become too much for the salmon to overcome. That natural recolonization would take too long. That we need hatchery supplementation to speed the Elwha's recovery. I've shared some of these concerns. But I want to turn away from the Elwha for just a moment and tell you a story about another river. On May 18, 1980, Mount St. Helens erupted, sending a wall of superheated volcanic ash into the Toodle River watershed. The result was complete and utter devastation of the river as tributaries and the main stem itself boiled under 1,000 degree temperatures. If you saw it, or you've seen pictures of the aftermath, you know what I'm talking about. All that remained was a desert landscape of blown down trees and thin trickles of muddy water running over vast stretches of gray ash fields. For all intents and purposes, the Toodle River was dead. Or so we thought. It turns out we underestimated Mother Nature's ability to heal herself. Within five short years, wild steelhead were back in what was left of the Toodle, finding ways to survive, reproduce, and miraculously thrive. By 1987, there were 2,588 wild steelhead spawning in the Toodle, a number that far exceeded what biologists considered its carrying capacity even before the eruption. In contrast, that same year, the nearby Kalama River, completely untouched by the eruption, with its high hatchery production, had a return of just 248 steelhead, wild steelhead. Somehow, within seven years of complete obliteration, the Toodle River had more wild winter steelhead than any other river in the entire Columbia Basin. It's an amazing story. Unfortunately, it doesn't end there. When we saw those numbers in a river we'd written off for dead, we humans decided to help Mother Nature by resuming massive hatchery plants and building a sediment retention dam. The explosive growth of the Toodle's new wild steelhead population responded to our help by stalling and eventually dwindling to match the low returns of all the other hatchery supplemented Columbia tributaries. This story shows us that wild fish can and will repopulate a barren river on their own, and much faster than anyone ever imagined. It also shows us what happens when man tries to improve Mother Nature. The restored Elwha here has a lot more going for it than the Toodle did. There are pure genetic strains of sockeye and steelhead remaining above the dam. A hundred miles of pristine habitat protected inside the national park and plenty of opportunity for wild strays to repopulate it from the Strait of Juan de Fuca. The sediment load coming down from the dams will only affect the lower main stem river, leaving headwater and tributary spawning grounds untouched. The wild salmon of the Pacific Ring of Fire have evolved to repopulate themselves in watersheds devastated by volcanic eruptions, earthquakes, glaciers, landslides. 
They've been doing it successfully for millions of years. But because we've somehow lost our faith in Mother Nature and won't believe what science has shown us in places like the Tootle, we're about to start releasing inbred, out-of-basin hatchery stocks into this newly restored habitat. Despite overwhelming evidence showing the presence of hatchery fish works as a powerful detriment to wild salmon recovery, we insist, once again, on helping the natural process. My wish then, as a fisherman, and especially as the father of two young children, is that we could somehow find the patience and the faith to let Mother Nature do what she's always done. Thank you for your time.